uh, from Dallas. He is with us uh, this morning to share the word of God with us. And uh, thank you, Josan, for introducing Pastor Joseph Matthew. You know, uh, Pastor Joseph Matthew also have visited uh, you know, our church uh, maybe a few years ago. And uh, uh, he was speaking the word with us. And uh, I think uh, I remember that uh, uh, Cedric and Amy, uh, they, uh, they just uh, I mean, took the baptism, water baptism during the time that pastor, uh, uh, that pastor came here. And uh, he, uh, I think after the class of that pastor, and uh, they decided to take baptism, I think. And uh, it is, it's a good time. And it's a, it's a privilege for us to have uh, Pastor Joseph Matthew once again with us this morning. Uh, to share the word of God. We thank you and we welcome. Let's all, I mean, put our hands together for Pastor Joseph Matthew. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Matt Joseph Matthew, and you're going to share the word of God today. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we are thank you for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name. Lord, again, your verse says, if two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Two of you agree about anything, ask anything. It shall be done for you by my Father who is in heaven, Lord. Again, your word says in Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatsoever you ask, it shall be done unto you. Father, we thank you. For the promise, Lord, no matter how many promises that you have given us, Lord, they are all as in Christ Jesus. So we're going to say amen to the promise of God. Be it so, be it so. Amen to the promise of God. Lord, you are a wonder working God. We are not limiting you, Lord, in our words. You are a limitless God. We thank you. You are El Sadai, the God who is more than enough to meet all the needs of the people, Lord. You are El Shaddai, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the church in California. We pray right now in Jesus' my name. Speak to our heart, Lord. Let your word come alive in our spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. One word from you can change our life forever. Let this noon time will be a wonderful time, Lord. May your word come alive in our spirit. Speak to us very clearly, very dearly to our heart, Lord. We thank you once again. We love you. We praise you. Glorify your name. Magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Say one more time, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be with you. This uh, is almost uh, noon time. I'm so happy to be with you. So <clears throat> God is, uh, even though we are far away, we can see face to face now. Even though uh, physically we are away from, from I'm from, I'm in Dallas, you're in California, but we are one in spirit. We are one in spirit. We thank God for the presence of God. Praise the Lord. So again, praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be so happy that you invited me to share God's word with you. I've been last uh, almost one month, day and night. I'm praying and praying. Praise the Lord here in this place also. And uh, God put a urgency in my heart to pray. Seek the face of God. Because everything comes after prayer. You ask Job. He had everything in his life. He lost everything. In a split of second, he lost everything. Finally, he come to the realization that he was worried about many things. His friends came and accused him for many things. But his heart, his heart is innocent before God. And again, he was worried about many things. Finally, he come to the point. Book of, you know, book of Job chapter 42 Verse 1, it says, I know you can do all things. I know you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. Praise the Lord. Everything starts with the faith. Faith in God can move mountains in our lives. He was worried and thinking about many things. You know, book of, book of Job, chapter 37, verse 14. Can you put it on the screen? Book of Job, chapter 37, verse 14. Book of John, chapter 37, verse 14. Ah. Okay. Okay. Hearken unto this, unto this, O Job. I mean, in the NIV Bible says, stop. Stop and consider the wonders of God. When you look in the previous chapters, we see that Job was praying. Job was complaining about my, even my, you know, 
everything is you know is against him even he was calling his servants none of them is answering his call he was worried he was worried about a lot of complaints in his life now the chapter 37 verse 14 says stop worrying about everything can stop job consider the wonders of god this morning again god is speaking to us stop worrying about everything what you are going through right now consider the wonders of god that means we need to meditate on god's word that's why book of hebrews chapter 12 we clearly read like this fix your eyes upon fix your thoughts upon jesus who is the author and the perfecter of our faith when god said to job can stop worrying about everything stop 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 worrying about everything consider the wonders of god when he started considering the god was speaking to him through the whirlwind and God asked many questions. We can see that 39, 40, 41, three chapters, God was speaking to Job. When he was speaking to Job, God wants, wants a response from Job's mouth. What is his response? And he said to God, brother, God is looking from us also, this kind of response. He said to God, chapter 42, book of Job, chapter 42, he said to God, then, Job replied to the Lord after he heard about God, after God was done for the people, after he heard everything, he replied to the Lord, I know you can do all things. What are you talking about? I know you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You ask of me, you ask who is that obscures my counsel without knowledge. Surely I spoke things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. And again, verse 5, it says, My ears have heard about you. My ears have heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. That means when he was going through the trouble, God opened his inner eyes. He had only had knowledge about God before. Now, through the trial, through the problems, he God opened his eyes. When he, when God opened his eyes, he said, my ears have heard about you. Before I had a knowledge, a theology, all pressure in my head. Now, my eyes have seen you. Oh my God. My eyes have seen you. Then what happened? Therefore, I despise myself. I humble myself. Therefore, I despise myself, repent. And then what? In dust and ashes. That is a requirement for prayer. Bible says, if my people, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, you all know this verse very well. Praise the Lord. If my people, God is calling us. If my people humble themselves and pray. Praise the Lord. And seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That is the word. God will not go back on his word. God's word is always true. It's a fact. It's a truth. God will never go back on his word. So now, he job despised himself. He put on sackcloth. Look at that. Therefore, I despise myself. Repent in dust and ashes. That now, God is saying, now you are ready for prayer. <laughs> now you are ready for prayer. Before you were complaining about many things. Even, you know, even my wife, you know, I mean, he's complaining about many things. When you, when you read in the book of Job, chapter 19, he's talking a lot of complaints, a lot of complaints. Now we come to the realization that God opened his eyes. I pray that God will open our eyes. Then we humble ourselves. We are nothing. Because the Bible clearly tells us, God opposed the proud, give grace to the humble. When we humble ourselves before God, God said, and forsake their evil ways. Anything hindering in our heart. Anything hindering in our heart. Brother, when we humble ourselves before God, Lord, forgive my sin. I have some grudges against somebody. Lord, please forgive me. Then you are ready for prayer. Now God is saying that. Now Job, you are ready for prayer. I always say, we talk about Moses. Moses, you know, Moses' sister, Miriam and also Aaron complain against Moses. And uh, look at that book of uh, Numbers, chapter 12. It's a favorite portion. 
book of numbers chapter 12 are you with me say yes can yes, you say pastor. yes can you hear yes, me pastor. very well yes pastor okay good good i need some response <laughs> praise the lord okay book of uh, numbers chapter 12 look at the book of numbers miriam and aaron spoke against moses because what because of the ethiopian wife you married a black woman now you are speaking to us praise the lord you married a ethiopian woman has no i mean verse 2 as the lord has spoken only through moses he asked as in also spoken to us also you know what the lord heard this <clears throat> my god the lord heard this the lord heard this look at that verse 3 you know what i mean moses could have been uh, give a nice sermon on that time don't you know who i am don't you know who i am when i stretched my road over the red sea red sea was departed I did a lot of miracles. You know, God used me mightily in Egypt. I'm all the plagues. I prayed. God answered the prayer. Now you start complaining with me. I mean, he could have said many things to Miriam and Aaron. You know what? He didn't say one word. We have to, we have, we have to uh, when you come to that portion, I always humble myself. When people say something against you, sometimes you want to speak something back to them. Because the Bible says, though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in order to pulling down every stronghold of the enemy. Our fight is not against our brothers and sisters. Our fight is not against our family members. Our fight is not against a pastor. Not against the people, against the evil spirit. The spirit which is praise the Lord, we need to understand who our enemy is. See, when Moses' sister and Aaron joined together, you want, you want to speak to us? You think who you are? I know you. Praise the Lord. The Lord heard this. When you are silent, God will speak for you. Sometimes we are not silent. We start talking and talking. God said, go ahead, you continue. I will be silent. So in other words, God wants you to speak to you this, uh, in this new time. If you are silent at this time, God will speak for you. Many times we st start speaking and speaking, God will back up. Now God is saying that, verse, look at verse 3. It is a most powerful word in the Bible. I mean, God testified, can you put that word in the... Now, a man, praise the Lord, man who was... Can you just put it on a, uh, which version is this? The King James version or can you put it on? Praise the Lord. Now the man, Moses was very meek. Malayalati vayakina Moses and the Purishino kudala thirula illa manshile kaalum adhi saumina irunu. Look at the, you know what, in the NIV Bible says, Moses was very humble, very humble, a man, more humble than anyone else. Not only in California, all over the world. Oh my Lord, that is a powerful word. He's the most humblest person. Who is speaking here? Not the pastor, not your wife, not your children. God himself is speaking for Moses. God is speaking for Moses. Do you know who my servant is? He's the most humblest person. Not only in California, all over America, no. All over the world. God made him like that. <laughs> he was also, was, he, he did some mistake. He killed one Egyptian. He ran away from Egypt. God taught him a beautiful lesson. He took 30, 40 years, make him humble. Make him humble 40 years. God is saying that now my servant Moses, very humble, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Oh my God. Then again, we see that another verse is, praise the Lord, uh, verse 6. Uh, look at it. Uh, uh, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. Please put it on the verse 7. Uh, verse 7. 
my servant Moses is not so. He is faithful in all my houses. You know, we are running a Bible college. In, you know, I'm not talking about the. I'm not. Um, I'm running a Bible college. Most of the students came from North India, from West Bengal. You know, because I speak to them, you know, uh, you know, Hindi also. I mean, not uh, that fluent, but I can speak very little. I speak this word to them. Mere abdas Moses sai sawala nahi hai. Sab karano mein biswa se yogi hai. Malayalti vai nenda dasina Moses yo angani orla ban Allah. Angani orla ro tripe ronda. There are a lot of people in that way quarreling, fighting. And we're uh, looking for position, popularity, fame. There are a lot of people there. My servant Moses is not like that. He is so he is faithful all in all my houses. First of all, I'm speaking to myself. After all, I preach to others. I may not be disqualified for the prize. I keep my body under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. I crucify my body. After all, I preach. When I preaching the word, I am more accountable. I am more accountable to the word. If I don't practice something in my life, I cannot preach. I am trying my very best to become more, more humble than anybody else. That's my goal. That's my goal. My goal is not to, to get a name or popularity or anything. That's all zero. God is looking for what? If my people humble themselves and pray, forsake their evil ways, and I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Here we see that God is speaking for Moses. Many times we want to speak. God said, God will back up. So this is this new time. God is speaking to us in every area of our life. What is our requirement? Lord, I want to make me make me more humble. More humble than anybody else in California. Start from your house. I want to make Lord make me a more humble servant in my house. In my workplace, in my church, in my city, then you can pray for Texas. You pray for California. Then you pray for oh my God, all over America. Make me more humble, humble than anybody else. In our Bible college, you know, the students come from West Bengal. They are all music. Um, they know how to play the instruments. They have special talent. God has gifted them. If they put their hands on any instruments, they can pray. I mean, I always tell them, when you see somebody is playing guitar very well, naturally we get jealousy spirit. Oh, that brother is doing very well. I get jealousy in my spirit. You don't need to say it. God knows our heart. If I keep jealousy in my spirit, in my heart, God knows it. I can put a nice smile face on everybody. Oh, Joseph Matthew is good. But God sees that he has some jealousy spirit. He has some jealousy spirit in his heart. I need to take care of that. So that is like a, jealousy is like a cancer. If I have a jealousy spirit in my heart, that's going to ruin me. That's going to destroy me. It's not going to destroy the other person. It's going to destroy me. Then I always tell that brother, if you feel like you have a jealousy against your brother who play the guitar very well or preach very well or doing something for God, if you have a jealousy spirit, you know what, my friend? Go, go outside of the church, get a bucket, get some water and bring it to the church and tell that brother, brother, please come here. I have some jealousy spirit inside of me. I want to clean that. Jealousy spirit. I want to take the jealousy spirit out of my life. Come and sit here, brother. Let me wash my face. Let me um, let me wash your feet. That's the way I say. If you have any jealousy spirit in your heart, because God says you need to be humble. If I am not humble, my prayers will not work. You can break all music, all noise. Noise is not going to do any good. You can make a I don't know, the noise thing is, I can give you a nice scripture verse for noise. Look at that for Samuel. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying anything against anybody. I'm speaking to myself first. Praise the Lord. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you for something, take it. If the Holy Spirit, I'm not, I'm, I didn't prepare to uh, 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 share this word with you. I have something else to share. But the Holy Spirit said, don't say that. Keep this word. 
I'm, I'm willing to become a fool in the sight of God. I want to be directed by the, by the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit says, I want to speak that word. Praise the Lord. Look at that first Psalm. What? Buddha Parabhatikkar Abhaude. Praise the Lord. Remember that portion there, um, First Samuel chapter 4. Philistines, you know, Israelites went and um, First Samuel chapter 4. Can you put it on the screen? An IV verse? An IV verse? Or New King James Version? Uh, uh, First Samuel chapter 4. Can, you, uh, can anybody read loud, please? Uh, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Anybody, anybody, can you help me in reading? Now the Israelites went out to fight against the Philistines. All right. The Israelites camped at Ebenezer. Sorry? We did not go speak. <laughs> oh, Ebenezer and the Philistines at Afe. The Philistines okay. deployed their force to meet Israel, and as the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. Okay, Israel went with the fight with the, uh, we know that portion very well. We're just going very fast. Israel attacked the Philistines. The Philistines killed how many people? 4,000 men. Okay, then go ahead, go ahead, continue, continue reading that portion. When the soldiers returned to camp, the elders in Israel asked, Why did the Lord bring defeat on us today before Philistines? Let us bring right. the ark of the Lord to come in from Shillong so that right. he may go with us and save us from the hands of our enemy. Right. So the people. Okay, continue, 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 continue. So the people please. sent to Shillong and they brought back the Ark of Covenant of the Lord Almighty who is enthroned between the cherubims and Eli's two sons, Hoping and Philip uh, yes. Finenas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark yes. of the covenant, Lord's Covenant came to the camp, all the Israel raised such a great shout and the ground shook, hearing the uproar the Philistines asked, What all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learned that the ark of the Lord has come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. A God has come into the camp. They said, oh no, nothing like this has happened before. We are doomed. Who will deliver us from the hands of these mighty gods? They are all gods who struck the Egyptians with all the kinds of plagues in wilderness. Be strong, Philistines. Be men or you will be subject to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought and the Israelites were defeated and every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was very great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. Okay, the okay. Ark of God was captured and Eli's two sons died. Died. Hold it. Hold it. We got it. Israelite went to um, you know, um, war with the um, Philistines. Philistines killed how many, th how many thousand people? 4,000 men. Then they were thinking that, you know why this happened? Because we didn't bring the Ark of God. Ark of God is the presence of God. Oh, you know why? We made a mistake. We need to bring the Ark of God. And Hophni and Phinehas, you know where, who are they? Regular Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were carried, brought the Ark from Shiloh to the warfare, battlefield. When the Ark was brought to the place, there was a beautiful, you know what the NIV Bible says, earth shook. Big revival. Say revival. God is not the only sound. Only sound, sound revival. So you look at that. They brought the ark and to the, uh, and when the ark was, um, ark of the Lord uh, covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout and the earth yeah. shook. The earth shook and hearing the uproar, Philistines asked, the big revival. Oh, the earth was, earth was shaking that. We saying that big revival. But God is not there. After the revival meeting, how many thousand people were killed? For, for, uh, how many thousand people were killed after the revival? 30,000. Not only that, the Opni and Finas were, uh, were killed also. They the one brought the ark. They were also killed. Um, you know, a revival is not the sound. It's a very true. I always preach that in Bible college. You can make a lot of noise. That means nothing. Means that we need to, we need to praise the Lord. I mean, we need to make the noise. We need to shout. We need to praise God. I'm not against that. I'm for it. But we need to clear our camp. 
If I'm holding something in my heart, I'm making a lot of noise. God said, you can make a lot of noise you want, but I'm not going to be there. So what we need is the presence of God in our life. How do we get the presence of God? Like what David said, one thing I desire of the Lord, that's what I'm seeking. All, not only on Sunday morning, all the days of my life. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord, to inquire him in his temple, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. That was the desire of David. One thing I desire, that's what I'm seeking every day, every day, because I want to dwell in the house of God. I want to walk in the presence of God. That's what the desire of Moses also. What is his desire? God said to Moses, I'm not going to walk with you. I will send the angels to take you to the promised land, but I'm not going to come with you. You know what Moses said? If you are not coming there, if your presence is not dwelling there, if your presence is not coming with us, do not send me in that place. Do not send me. What is our greatest desire? Our desire is what? I want to dwell in the house of God. I want to have the presence of God in our life. When you have the presence of God, the presence of God in your life brings joy, excitement, and the praise of the Lord in our life, peace in our life. So here we see that so when we humble ourselves before God, you know, who will come there? God opposed the proud, go give grace to the humble. When we humble ourselves before God, you are ready for prayer. Likewise, in the case of Moses, God was testing about Moses. Is Miriam, his sister and brother talk against God, to talk against Moses. Moses kept silent. You know why? He's the most humble person. Many times we're getting angry about people. Oh, we need to fast and pray. We need to fast and pray. God is watching all the time. When you are in the bathroom, God can watch you. When you are in the bedroom, God is still watching you. God is hearing everything because there is life and death are in the power of tongue. Even if you didn't say anything, even in your heart, what you are thinking in your heart or in your mind, God knows it. We cannot hide anything from God. So what God is requiring from us is what? We need to be humble. When you are humble before God, God said you are ready for prayer. Likewise, when Moses prayed, guess what happened? All the plagues in Egypt. When in Moses, even Pharaoh said to Moses, when the plague, you know, came upon the land of Egypt, he was not looking for a pest control people to pray. He wanted to pray. No, yes. Spray is S-P-R-A-Y. Pharaoh said, I don't need spray. I only need P-R-A-Y. Pray. Who can pray on this matter? Only Moses. <laughs> Why? He's the most humblest person on the face of the earth. Moses said, when Moses said, Amen, guess what happened? All the frogs died. Why? Because the Bible clearly tells us, if my people humble themselves and pray, Forsake their evil ways. I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. Anything in our life. Praise the Lord. If you are not humble, God cannot hear our prayer. If, if, listen to our prayer. Look at the life of Jonah. Jonah heard from the Lord. God said to Jonah, I wanted to go to Nineveh. Preach against it. He was not interested in that. You know why? He has no burden for the souls. Ministry must start with the burden for the souls. I've been doing the ministry in India. We can say that I'm running this, I'm running this church and everything. I used to run a school also. So after 14 years, God said, no, no, no more school. I closed it. I'm running the Bible college and the church right now. All my believers came from Hindu background. All of them, poor people, come from Hindu background. They're worshiping God. I, when I go there, Really touch my most people are poor people. Some of them are living in small huts. I mean, daily wages, they may get a, I mean, very poor people. You know what? Whenever I go there, they never ask money from me. Still, when I go there, guess what happened? They, at least they give me every house, at least we have a prayer meeting for, every evening we have six or seven houses prayer meeting, not one house, seven houses prayer meeting. Every house, at least half an hour. Meeting started around 6.30, go up to 10.30, 11 o'clock, as the Holy Spirit leaves. And then what happened? Every house, the poor people don't have anything. Some houses don't have any chair. When I go there, 
Sometimes I sit, I like to sit on the floor. I mean, kneel down and pray. That's my great desire. Pray, I'm not, praise the Lord. When I go to the house, I kneel down and pray in that house. When I leave from the house, these poor people could have asked me, hey, pastor, you come from America. You have to do some help to us. Don't you know? Can you see this, my house? You can help us. They never ask me money. They never. After I preach in every house, I pray for the houses, at least they gave me 10, 10 rupees. 10 or 20 rupees. Without 20 rupees, they won't let, let me go. Sometimes with the tears, if I don't accept that money, they get upset. I take that money from them, 20 rupees or 30 rupees, whatever it may. Sometimes 50 rupees they will give. I mean, what I'm saying, I'm not talking about the money because they love Jesus. They love Jesus. They don't know what to do. They are not after the money. They are very humble people. They, because they forsook the, all their gods. And now they are serving Jesus. When they come and worship God in the church, oh my God, my praise the Lord. I mean, the, the whole church will vibrate. The people are real hunger for God. They forsook all their, all their man-made idols and come there and worshiping God in that place. They are very humble people. They're ready to do anything for God. I'm so happy, praise the Lord. But I was trying to say something, praise the Lord. I, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit says, I'm doing it. I want to be called as the most humblest person. That's my heart desire, praise the Lord. Because if I don't humble myself to, see, like Jonah, praise the Lord. God told him to go to Nineveh. Okay, well, I got the point. So I went to India. I'm doing the ministry there. I always evaluate myself. My ministry, the ministry start with the burden for the souls, not after the money. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't have any burden for the souls, that is a business. Non-profit organization business. We are not running a business. We are building the kingdom of God. So we need to have a burden for the souls. Look at the, the apostle Paul. I always preach this one. Remember Paul and Silas were in the prison. They were worshiping God. And the praise the Lord. Then what happened? You know the story well. The, earth, the, the foundations of the prison were shaken. All the chain fell off. All the prisoners, those who are sitting in the prison, they were listening to Paul and they didn't complain. They, they could have said, get out of here, you know. Don't you know what time it is now? It is almost 12 o'clock. I mean, when you shut up and go and sleep, they didn't say anything. They listened to Paul and Silas. You know why? They didn't complain about anything because of that. Yeah, all their chains fell off. They became free. They listened to the worship. When you listen to the sermon, God will do something. No complain about anything. Complainers will never get anything from the Lord. When you start complaining about things, the Amalekites came and attacked with you. So guess what happened? They were worshiping. They were worshiping God and the chain fell off and the foundations of the prison were shaken. All the doors were flew open. And there comes the jailer. Jailer thought everybody escaped from the prison. You know what? That's really a powerful word. The jailer trying to kill himself. And then uh, uh, somebody read that verse, please. Book of Acts, chapter 16. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Say loudly, Jesus. Are you getting anything today? Yes, Jesus. Amen. Look at that, you know. Look at that. Uh, verse 25 onwards. Verse 25 onwards. Book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 25 onwards. When he received these orders, he put them in an inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison door open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Okay, okay. Hold, hold it there. Hold it that way. 
I like that word very much. The jailer was trying to kill himself. And the Paul could have said, ah, good for him. You know why? Yesterday he beated me very badly. Now God is punishing him. God is saying, oh, look at that. This is what I, you know, this is an answer for my prayer. He could have said like this. You know what? When the jailer was about to kill himself, he shouted, why? He has a burden for him. Brother, if you kill yourself like this, you will go to hell. I have a burden for you, my friend. Mm -hmm. I have a burden. Everything starts with a burden. Brother, don't kill yourself. Shouted. Shouted means don't harm yourself. Don't you know that? There is a heaven and hell. If you die without Christ, you're going to go to hell. For eternity. For eternity. That we need to get a vision for hell and heaven. When you get a vision for hell, you run like a mad dog. When you get a vision for, see, Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. You know what? And he knelt down and he said, go ahead, brother, continue that verse, please. Verse 29, verse 29, please continue. Uh, the jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and out. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They huh. replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Oh my Lord. He got one soul. One family got saved. <laughs> After the worship, one family got saved. The jailer took them into their house and he shared the gospel. They said they want to baptize tonight itself, not tomorrow. Look at that verse also. The whole family, read that verse also. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his households were baptized. Oh the my Lord, hold it there, hold it there. You know what? In the middle of the night itself, they began to worship the Lord. The jailer, when he was trying to kill himself, he could say, ah, okay, fine. Let him, you know, let him die. No, 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 no. Brother, you don't know. If you die like that, you are going to end up in hell. There is no way of escape from that place. Jesus said about a parable about a rich man and a Lazarus. The rich man is crying from the hell. From the torment, from the uh, 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 tormenting place. I have five brothers there, one in Karnataka, one in California, one in uh, Texas. I have five brothers. They, they think there is no hell, no heaven. They are enjoying their life pleasures. Now I know hell is real. Hell is, you know, can you please send Lazarus to my house so that you will believe it? You know what? They are Moses, they are pastors. They are, let him listen for them. That word is so powerful. I have five brothers. That word took me to India. The Lord said, you know, the rich man said, I have one brother in Karnataka, one brother in West Bengal, one brother in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana. Jeeva Nadini Narudaya Mullo Pravagim Jacherumaya we sing that Telugu song there in the church. I have one brother in Telugu, Telangana. And I pray one brother in, in, in Tamil Nadu. I have five brothers. That word brought me to India. I'm still looking for the five, five brothers. Still working. I have the bed in my heart. I'm not bragging about myself. I have a bed in my heart. If I lost the bed in my heart, something is wrong. I had to pray, fast and pray. Sometimes we fast and pray, oh, somebody else is sick, good. But you had to pray. If you don't have any burden for the soul, you had to pray. You go and see a doctor, you tell the doctor, doctor, I don't feel like to eat anything. It lasts you one week. I don't have any hunger, no thirst, no hunger. Doctor said, good for you. You don't need to go to the grocery shop. Yeah. You don't need to cook anything. Don't worry about it. You are all right. <laughs> no, no. Doctor said, you have some problem there. 
very serious problem. We need to do some scanning. We have to do some x-rays. We have to do some blood work. We have to find out something wrong with your stomach, my friend. That made you to not to eat. If I don't have any burden for the soul, you need to go for scanning. You have some problem there. Everything start with burden for the, the prayer start with the burden for the souls. That's why book of Jeremiah, chapter nine, verse one. Can you put it on the screen, please? Who is doing the work? I will pray for you. Go ahead, book of Jeremiah, chapter nine, verse one. Um, who is going to read that verse? Oh, that my head. Where okay, so put your name there, my head. Put your name, instead of my, you put your name there and read it. Oh, that Jason were a spring of water. Jason's head. Okay, touch your head and say, oh, that Jason's head. Uh, read that. Were a spring of water. Uh, and my eyes a fountain of Jason's tears. eyes. Yes, sir, Jason's eyes. Sir. Oh, that my, uh, Jason's head were a spring of water and Jason's eye a fountain of tears. Huh. Jason would weep and day and night for the oh, slain of my Lord. You are in the right track. You are in the right track. Huh. Oh, that Jason had in the desert a lodging place for travelers, so that Jason might leave my people and go away from them. Amen. So That's why. Adulterers, a that crowd of unfaithful Jeremiah people. saying that, oh my God, a spring of water, my eyes, fountain of tears, that I may cry day and night for the slain of Israel. I have a burden. Say, I have a burden. I have a start with the burden. You ask Jeremiah, you ask Nehemiah. He was a compared to the king. He had a very decent job. I mean, very decent job. Why do I need to worry about? When he, some of the brothers came from Jerusalem, he, he asked them, how, how is my brothers doing there? You know what? The walls of Jerusalem is broken down. The people are in distress. Oh my Lord. Malayarati Vaikine Nyana Ilinu Karanyu Vosichu. Sit and, and weep and fasted for many days. Almost four months he fasted. What's the matter with you, Nehemiah? You have a stomach pain? No. No stomach pain? You have a problem in your family? No. I have a burden. The walls of Jerusalem is broken down. My people are in distress. Mm -hmm. I'm fasting and praying. For how many months? Four months. I don't know what to do. I have a burden. Everything starts with the burden. Like Martin Luther, many, many years ago, he said, I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream. I have a burden. I have a dream. I may not get there. My people will get there in the White House. Exactly. That dream was fulfilled. And Obama came, became a president of America. That dream was fulfilled. I may not get there. My people will get there. My people will get there. That dream was fulfilled. So I have a burden in my heart. What is my burden? Burden for the souls. When you have the burden, that's why Jesus said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. I have a burden in my heart. Everything starts with the burden. Prayer starts with the burden. Nehemiah asked Nehemiah, what are you having? A hey, brother, I have a burden. Walls of Jerusalem, many families' walls are broken down. People are in distress. I have a burden. When you have the burden in your heart, you begin to pray. That is a real prayer. That is a real prayer. When you don't have any burden in your heart for the soul, so you need to fast until you get the burden. When I go to India, my ministry starts, as soon as I get in the airport, I start ministry. I start with the customer service. I look for a way how to present Jesus to them. If I go to the, I'm not bragging about myself. If I go to a grocery shop, I look a way how can I present Jesus to them. I went to an India, India bazaar, the grocery shop. There's a nice lady there. If I don't preach the, go to me if I don't preach the gospel. If I don't, suicide Marie Kimilengi and Ikayu Kashta. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everybody. Everybody. I asked her, she was, doing, she was punching the numbers. I said, what is your name, ma'am? Oh, my name is Tripti. Tripti. Oh, 
I asked him, your name is Tripti, okay, are you really satisfied? You know what she said? No, absolutely not. Behind of her, a lot of Hindu gods, they, are, they want to sell the gods. Behind of her, a lot of gods are sitting there for sale. A lot of Hindu gods are on sale. This week on 50% off, gods are on sale. I said, this man-made gods cannot help you. That man-made gods need help. Move from one place to other, need people's help. But I'm serving a God who can help you. I said, let me pray for you. I said, Jesus is a savior. He didn't come to make a religion, form a religion. He came to save us. Make a way for us to go to heaven. You are, a, you are We are all the children of God. God doesn't have any favoritism. When you come to know Christ, I shared gospel with her. I prayed for her. Finish my work. I go from there. We don't need to go to all the way to India. A lot of Indians are in your community. Start the ministry there. Some people say, I have to go to North India. Don't need to worry about North India. North India is right near to your corner. If you want to go to Andhra Pradesh, right near the house, there are a lot of people from Andhra Pradesh. You need to reach out to people with the compassion of Christ. That's all the ministry is all about. Praise the Lord. Look at that. When you have that burden in your heart, humble yourself, have the burden in your heart, you are on the right track. When Job prayed, Job became very humble. He put on the sackcloth. He became humble. And now God is saying, now my servant, his job is ready for prayer. Hey, Job, he, uh, uh, Job, God spoke to his friends. My servant, Job, will pray for you. And God said to how can I pray? I lost my children, 10 children. I lost everything. How can I pray? No, you can still pray. <laughs> my God knows. My God said, my servant Job will pray. I will accept his prayer. After he prayed, guess what happened? God gave him twice as much as he had before. Double for the trouble. I'm praying for America. Restore everything. Like American President Bush, I'm sorry, uh, Trump. On the election time, he said, make America great. That's what I'm praying right now. Lord, make America great again. Restore America. Because so we are so adapted to pray for this country. Why? When I came in this country back in 1982, I didn't bring a one penny from India. After all, I came from here, from India. I am so adapted to pray for this country. Even for fasting for 40 days, I'm ready for it. Why? I am adapted to pray for this country because God has blessed me in this country. If I don't pray, I'm sinning against God. That's why I'm fasting and praying, praying for the restoration of this country. The Lord gave me a word, praise the Lord, I will visit that land. I'm standing on the word, book of Joel chapters 2, verse 16 and 17. That's what I'm standing on it. Praise the Lord. 15, 16, 17. Read that verse. Jason, please. Gather the people, right? consecrate the assembly, huh. bring together the elders, gather yes. the children, those nursing at the breast. Yes. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord huh. be between the portico and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? So that's where we are standing now. We are all standing on this word. Book of Job, if somebody asks you, where are you standing? I'm standing on book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 16, 17. Let everyone come out from the, from the, from the bondage. Let everyone come out from the tent and worship the Lord and cry out to God. Because Jeremiah said, Lord, make my heart like a fountain of water, that I may cry and for the slain of her, and that I may cry for this country. Uh, even at this minute, what I'm preaching, many people are dying in New York City. Many people are dying. That make me to pray. That make me to cry. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. When you cry and pray like this, we, I'm praying that the coronavirus will disappear today itself. That's my heart desire. Now, God knows when to move. Mm -hmm. God has something 
behind this, behind this coronavirus. God has some plan and purpose for it. God will accomplish that plan. Until then, coronavirus will not go. God wants to accomplish that purpose. Look at that. And after that, this is what God gave me a promise. Book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 17. I'm sorry, 18 and 19 and 20. Read that verse, Brother Jason. Then the Lord was jealous for his land. Ah, God was jealous for America. Ah, okay. And took pity on his people. Right. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. Right. Verse 20, verse 20, can read that. I will drive the northern horde far from you, ah. putting it into the parched and barren land. Right. Its eastern ranks will draw, drown in, in the Dead Sea, and its western ranks in the Mediterranean Sea. Ah. And it stays. So that's what I'm praying for the coronavirus will go into the deep sea. The Lord gave me a promise. I'm standing on the word, I'm declaring the word. God will be jealous with this land. When? When my people humble themselves and pray, Hallelujah. forsake their evil ways. God is calling you and me to fast and pray for this country, America. We cannot pointing out on anybody oh, because of your mistake, because of no, that mistake. No, no, no. It's my mistake. Like Daniel, praise the Lord, he prayed and fasted for 21 days. God answered the prayer. God, uh, praise the Lord. God visited that land, brought the people back to Jerusalem. I pray that, you know, God will visit us. God will make us more humble so that when we pray, God will answer the, God will heal the, God will heal America. Hallelujah. God will heal America. That Amazing. promise will be, I will restore everything. I will restore whatever the enemy has taken away. God said, I will restore it. That's my prayer that God will make America great again. When we humble themselves and pray, like mm -hmm. Jonah, praise the Lord, I ran away from the Lord. God knows how to how to touch, when to touch. Uh, praise the God knows it. Amen. When he was sleeping in the ship, praise the Lord, there was a storm. You know the story very well. All the Hindu people, I always preach that in India. Hindu people trying to call the monkey god, you know, elephant god, lion god, all the gods didn't work out. Then they throw all the cargo, cargo in the sea, didn't work out. There comes one preacher, he's preaching. One preacher is doing what? Sleeping. God knows how to wake you up. <laughs> then how can you sleep at this time? This time, this is not the time to sleep. It is the time to wake up. Come out from the chamber. Come out from that place. Start praying, start praying. And they ask Jonah, who is responsible for all this calamity? Oh, China, China. Not China. <laughs> We blame on China. You know why? Mm, some problem with the China. They don't know. No, it's not China. Jonah said, it's not China. It's me. <laughs> Jonah didn't point out, you know, you know what? I read the Psalms this morning, Psalms 34. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, that is with me. Bless his holy name, forget none of his penalty. After the prayer, he went to the wrong place. And Jonah didn't say, you know why? I read Psalms this morning. I prayed very well this morning. Now, you know, all this world, because of you, because of you. You know, you guys are worshiping idols. All this problem happened because of that. You know what? Jonah said, you know what? The problem is me. <laughs> if my people humble themselves and pray, pick me up and throw me in the sea. Sea will come. Answer. My God, how can you say this? Pick me up and throw me in the sea. That's the way we solve family problems. We always want to accuse. You know, when God said to um, uh, God said to Adam, why did you eat the fruit? You know what? The problem is my wife. And God called her. You know what? Not me. You know what? The serpent came there. Blaming on the serpent. That's a pressure from, from Adam and Eve. And Jonah knew it is my mistake. Pick me up and throw me in the sea, sea will come. These people said, I don't know. I mean, this is something. This is a very good preacher. You only preach for 30 seconds. I almost preach one hour right now. But you want to preach only for 30 seconds? Pick me up and throw me in the sea. How long it's going to take, Brother Jason? That sermon. 
30 seconds. 30 second sermon. And they said, no, they said, you, you have to put me in the, uh, in the sea. You know what the Bible says? He who can, book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, he who conceal his sin never prosper. Okay. I live in Prosper in, that, in Texas. The city name is Prosper. Even though I live in Prosper, that's not going to make me prosper. He who conceal his sin never prosper. He who confess it and renounce it will receive the mercy of God. Pick me up and throw me in the sea. When they said, no, no. When they threw Jonah in the sea, guess what happened? There's a big revival in the ship. They thought Jonah is already gone. <laughs> no. God said, no, 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 no. If anybody humble themselves and pray, I will heal them also. Now Jonah, God commanded a fish to praise God to swallow Jonah. Oh my, that is the greatest miracle. When they threw Jonah in the sea, the fish was ready. Fish was ready. Opened their mouth and are oh, looking for Jonah to come, come inside. That is the greatest miracle in the Bible. <laughs> oh my God, that is so powerful. God appointed a fish with an open mouth. Right in the right location. As soon as Jonah came, went into the belly of the fish. In the mouth and came inside. And the people in the ship think that, oh, poor man died. Oh, my Lord. That poor man, oh, poor preacher died. That's what they were thinking. But God said, if you conceal your sin, never prosper. If you confess it, renounce it, you will receive mercy. Even in the Karnal and Karnal Vikip. Karuna Maidu. Telangir Parana Karuna Maidu. Our God is a merciful God. Even in the sea, God will make a way where there is no way. God will make a way. So guess what happened? In the ship, there is a big revival. That is why if my people humble themselves and pray, there is going to be a revival in our family, restore our family, restore our family relationship, restore our children. There's going to be a revival in my house. I mean, Holy Ghost revival in my house. That revival is going to spread in our church, in our city. That's going to spread all over America. That's revival. That fire is going to wipe out the coronavirus from the land of America. God is looking for us. And there is a big revival in the ship. They said, we are going to worship the God. I wish you want to give me the church name so that next week we'll come to that, go to that church. Jonah didn't give a church name, but Jonah said, there is a God in heaven. It's a wonder working. They said, we are going to worship the God of Jonah. Hal, we are going to worship the God of Jonah. A big revival in the ship. That's why we, we, we're going to humble ourselves and pray. That's going to be a greatest revival in the United States of America and every corners of America. They're all going to look under the God's face. I believe that after this revival, revival, this is what God has spoken to me. After the 10 plagues in Egypt, God said, I'm not going to leave the people here. I'm going to take the people to what? To the promised land. Likewise, Jesus is coming very soon. We are going to, Christ himself will come down from a loud camera, from heaven with a loud command, voice of archangel, trumpet of God, dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Jesus is coming very soon. We don't know, it can happen tonight. It can happen tomorrow. We need to be get ready. This is this coronavirus is a wake up call for the believers, so that we can uh, we can we wake up from our slumber, and we can do something for God. Time never wait for us. Let's pray. Father, we praise you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Bless them this this new time. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. Forgive all of our mistakes, Lord, our shortcomings, anything in our heart, unforgiveness, hatred in our heart, grudges in our heart with anybody. Please forgive us, Lord. Make us a people that you want us to be, Lord. We don't want only the hearers of sermon. We want to be the doers of God's word. Thank you, Lord, for the church. Bring a mighty revival in the church. I thank you for every family, those who are attending the church, Lord. Father Karaba Shandalara Baba, this could be a mighty revival in the church, Lord. We thank you. 
We appreciate you. Glorify your name, Lord. Amen. Just my name, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you very much. Praise God. Hallelujah.